So let's go again everyone as we know that functions are building block of all the programs in all programming languages. So in this particular video we are going to talk about functions in Go and we are going to see some of the specifics of functions like you know how to pass parameter, what are the way to define that, return type as well as variadic functions. Since functions are the building blocks we must understand how to make use of that so that we can create our awesome Go program. So let's go ahead and start and as you can see there is already a function main defined over here and I'm going to define another function called function let's say yt func and in this particular function let me print something fmt.println let's go okay and if I go ahead and call this function you can see that let's go is printed now this is a very basic function now when we call that function it does something based on the input that is being provided and returns something also if a function is neither taking anything nor returning anything why to have that function right so let's understand first how to pass parameters to the function and passing of the parameters is very similar to any other programming language you say those parameters in the parameter list along with type in go so if i want to pass two parameters let's say a and b i need to define their type i will say a as int b also as int and okay i will take 10 comma 20 okay and if i go ahead and run this particular function both parameters are passed but nothing happens now let's assume that i want to sum them and return them so what we can do we can say return a plus b now in go programming language unlike c c plus plus and java you define the return type of the function towards the right side so in here i am going to define the return type over here okay and instead of printing this fmt.println over here let me print over here and the output of this function as fmt.println and if i go ahead and run this particular function you can see that 30 is printed okay now let's look at some of the optimization here a and b both are of same type which means that there is a shortcut we can say a comma b as type int Remember, we can do this only and only if both are of same type or all the variables, even if it is more than two, are of the same type. So, if we go ahead and run this code, it will run, okay? Now, there is an interesting thing in Go where you can return multiple values, multiple return values from a function. In our later videos, we will see how to make use of that, but it's a very good thing to know about. Now, returning multiple values from the function is not new, and you can even use struct or arrays in C, C++, and Java, but this is unique and this is very, very helpful. For example, you know, you got an error along with the error message. If you want to return both of them, you can do that easily in Go. So in this particular function, if I want to return, let's say, you know, I want to return C is equal to A plus B, but at the same time, I want to return, let's say a random value, C and 100, okay? So how to define a function which takes return value, multiple return value? We will give over here in bracket int comma int. And this is how we return multiple values from a function. Now in here, in the println, uh, I cannot use this. I need to, you know, define multiple parameters to take the output. Here, A and B are taking the output from the function, yt function, and I am going to print those over here, A comma B. Okay, so the difference here is that actually returning multiple parameters from a function without using any struct. So, here is how it looks like and the return will be 30 and 100. Here instead of int I can also say a string and I will say return 100 as a string. Okay. It will work. So the sequence of return values will directly match to 
the way it is being defined, the sequence it is being defined. If first is int, first return should be int. Second is string, then second return should be string. Now, this is all about general way of, you know, having a function. Now, let's get rid of the return type for a moment. And, you know, talk about passing parameters. Now, in this way, a comma b comma c comma or d, we can pass multiple parameters, but what if we don't know how many parameters we are going to pass in the function, but we want parameters. To handle these kind of scenarios, we have what we call it as variadic function. Here is how we define variadic functions. So in here, what we will say, we need a parameter, let's say param and dot 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 int, which means this particular param will receive multiple integer types we don't know how many integers now as you might have guessed that those multiple parameters should be int so here is how we are going to make use of that so let me call this particular function with two parameters as of now let me get rid of this println and i have these two parameters 10 20 or let's say even 30 in the parameter now how to extract the values from the parameter you remember the range I have talked about in previous videos. So we are going to use same for range to extract all the values. So we will say for i comma v index value range of param and we will say fmt dot println at index equal to i value equal to v. Let me go ahead and run this code. Well, I need to give comma over here and double quotes over here. So let me go ahead and run and you can see that index 0 value 10, 20, 30 and I can even say 4, 5, 6, something like this. Okay. And if you go ahead and run, you will get multiple parameters as variadic functions so in this particular function you can get multiple parameters of course what you want to do it's up to you now at this moment of time i don't want to confuse you that how the parameter is received and can we do something else on top of that if these are slices or arrays please let's not talk about that right now i do not want to confuse you when we learn programming it is not needed to learn all the you know concepts at that moment of time once you start solving the problems you are anyway gonna use that and at that point of time it is not only easy to learn but also easy to remember now let's talk about one last thing if i want to pass multiple parameters can't i pass some arrays no you cannot pass the arrays but you can pass the slices if i create a slice over here let's say s1 equal to int slices 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 and here I can just pass s1 dot 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 that's all and if you go ahead and run this code things will work you can say 1 2 3 4 5 is the value just to check I change it to 200 and you will see 200 over here so this is how you can use variadic functions to accept as well as use slices to pass multiple parameters in a function. So these were few things about the functions I wanted to talk to all of you about before going ahead with you know other videos of code programming language. So thank you all. Thanks for watching. We will definitely meet again. Until the next time we meet, good day, goodbye. You take care.